Right now, multiple heat domes are breaking records across the entire northern half of the globe. And for the next couple days, it's not just hot temperatures we have to worry about. The threat for severe weather and flooding is going to persist across the U.S. for just a little longer, especially later today, July 20th. After today, there may be a bit of relief in sight for so many of us who have gone through so many rounds of severe weather, but a relief in rain will come with an equally dreadful new heat wave. In this video, I'm going to set the stage and let you know how and why this next step of summer is taking place. Meteorologist Andy Hill here at the Weather Forecasting Desk. Let's dive right into it. So to begin, let's review the Weather Prediction Center outlooks that give us a concise look at what's going on across the nation in terms of active weather over the next few days. Today looks incredibly active with huge overlapping areas of flash flooding and severe weather risks in the yellow and red, respectively. And I'll have an in-depth look at today's severe weather here in the next few minutes for these areas in particular. But looking at Friday and Saturday here, you can see that the excitement kind of dies down really rapidly here. The green areas here are where thunderstorms could occur as we get into the weekend. And you can see that there's a lot less area covered compared to previously. I think that with this widespread change, we'll start to see a new weather suspect creep in, giving us a lot of uncomfortable conditions. We're in summer, you could guess it, heat. While we may get our first July day here soon without a focused area for severe weather, not all of us will be spared from some upcoming discomfort. First off, our heat dome here in the states will continue to break records this week across the southern and southwestern U.S. We're looking about four kilometers up in the atmosphere on this map here. There's a bunch of roasting bread on your map here. If you ever see a map like this, what it's telling you is simply the heights at which this pressure level is present at in the atmosphere. And generally, where you have higher heights, like this area focused in the desert southwest over Arizona and Utah, you're going to see warmer conditions at the surface. So in accordance with this prolonged heat dome here in the desert southwest, numerous daily high temperature records have been set from Arizona to Texas, and there is more to come as the heat is expected to expand. But first, let's analyze something a little bit closer. Several of the most interesting records that have been broken and are still being threatened are some you might not think about. They're set at nighttime rather than during the day, such as this all-time record low temperature set in Phoenix, Arizona yesterday morning. When you get a heat advisor on your phone or even an excessive heat warning like many in the south have received recently you should know that nighttime temperatures are actually a major factor in distributing these warnings and also in the risks that they pose the urban heat island effect if you've heard of it before not only occurs in downtown urban areas here but also in suburban areas to a lesser extent essentially urban and suburban developments here trap hold and reflect heat near the surface and all those processes occur much more efficiently than over rural areas and fields. This means that daytime temperatures near the surface can be a couple of degrees Fahrenheit higher than what they would have been in a rural area. But what's not shown on this graphic in particular is that nighttime temperatures are actually the predominant urban heat island effect and can be over five degrees Fahrenheit warmer than in a rural area overnight. That is due to the slow release of heat that is absorbed by the buildings during the day and that keeps the temperatures up as we go through the night. That hot air overnight places a continual stress on the power grid and also doesn't allow our bodies to cool off as efficiently. And that makes the next day's heat worse for everybody here on this graphic. So I know some of you watch these videos and say, oh, it's summer, it's just gonna be hot. But let that bit of knowledge about urban heat islands, especially in the suburban areas, factor into your own assessment of these heat advisories and warnings as you get them. And speaking of a heat wave, we're gonna watch the expansion of one this week weekend as the west coast warms up all the way into Canada and then next week into the center of the continent as seen on this video's thumbnail and right here on this map of surface temperature anomalies. I looked at my weather app and I saw 99 degrees Fahrenheit coming up next week for the Twin Cities here in Minnesota where I'm at. That's a jump of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit above what we've been experiencing in these areas so it's definitely noteworthy and we should talk about it. Some areas of interest that will experience this heat wave and shout outs to y'all watching in these areas. Spokane, Washington over the next couple of days will approach 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Boise, Idaho is going to be in the mid hundreds, 105 degrees Fahrenheit over the next few days. Even Calgary, Alberta will reach 30 degrees Celsius at some point this weekend. As we get into next week, we can see areas in the high plains and the central plains start to heat up. That's approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit here in Denver, Colorado near the start of the week. You can see these massive temperature anomalies also entering Saskatchewan. And then getting into the middle of the week, the whole 
the Central Plains warms up to nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit from Oklahoma City north to Omaha and all the way up through the Dakotas and Minnesota. All those temperatures are analyzed very succinctly by this outlook map from the Climate Prediction Center for the end of July. And all this warmth is certainly not unique to North America right now. As I mentioned, there are several different heat domes or areas of high pressure occurring across the Northern Hemisphere. And one of the most notable is in Europe right now and is impacting the southern half of Italy. Just the other day, Rome in Italy fell just shy of 43 degrees Celsius or 109 degrees Fahrenheit. And that toppled their previous all-time temperature record by over 4 degrees Fahrenheit or about 2.5 degrees Celsius. Now let's take a look at today's severe weather risk as it is pretty significant. We've had an upgrade to an enhanced risk or 3 out of 5 for parts of the Great Lakes region just this morning from the Storm Prediction Center. So we're going to focus on this area first. The risk here is in place for damaging winds and possibly very large hail and so it's much less so for tornadoes. It does include Detroit, Fort Wayne, Columbus, Cleveland over to Pittsburgh and Erie, Pennsylvania. We can also connect the dots for southwestern Ontario and also for the slight risk into the greater Toronto metro region. Ongoing storms this morning in the Mitten of Michigan will fill into the south this afternoon through Indiana and there will be quite a few of them. These storms are being pushed along by a mild cold front so we'll likely see them take the shape of a line with some of y'all getting the stronger downbursts in that line wherever the stronger cells are. So taking a look at the environment here we can see the cold front very clearly on this map of dew points or a measure of the moisture at the surface here. So you can see the cold front showing up nicely here with pleasant humidity back behind it and oppressive humidity out in front of it. This oppressive juicy air here out in front of the cold front is being pushed upward as it meets together and this is what's going to form our very juicy storms. Now I'm going to pick up spot here to take a cross section through the atmosphere and see what it looks like. So above your heads here around the Toledo, Ohio area, you can see how the temperature and dew point change with this side of the graph over here. This area right here depicted on this graph is the available potential energy or the CAPE and the model projection of it here has it around 3,000 joules per kilogram which is more than enough to get you some storms. The graph on the right side here is our hodograph which tells us how winds change with both direction and speed as you go up each layer in the atmosphere. Some of the major reasons we know that today might be more of a hail threat than a tornado threat is contained in this tiny graph right here, believe it or not. So looking closely here, the winds begin to accelerate pretty far above the surface as we follow the right side of this line up to 7 or 8 kilometers above the surface. This side of the graph in particular tells me that organized storms like supercells are supported. And looking really closely at the details here, particularly from this 0 to 1 indicator, this is the first kilometer above the surface, and the winds are barely changing at all between these two numbers. That means that tornadoes are unlikely in general, as there's not really much chaos going on right here near the surface. This also means that large hail, even very large hail, is possible based on this lowest layer of the graph. Any hail that forms in the storm isn't necessarily necessarily going to be subject to very strong winds throwing it all over the place. And that means that all that hail in that region is generally going to stay in the storm and it's going to be supported and grow in size until it becomes too heavy and actually falls out on its own. So this is the kind of signature you're looking for to support some very large hail in the event that severe weather does occur. If we're looking at this photograph here and the shape happened to be much more amplified like this and then follow the same rest of the trend way above the surface, vice versa would exist on the tornado and hail threat. So once again, those storms push through Ohio and southern Ontario this evening and through Pennsylvania into the night hours tonight. At the same time, another windstorm or two will take a path of least resistance right down here through the southeast. So you can see that in action here. This is why we have a slight risk in the yellow in place for damaging winds through these areas into the early night. A few of y'all down here might get a couple rounds of severe weather. You might see two different shelf clouds today. And lastly, parts of the high plains into the central plains here will have one more go at an enhanced risk of severe weather, which will take off in the I-25 corridor in the early afternoon hours and continue on as a damaging complex of storms through the early night. The tornado threat over here is also lower today in the green is a marginal risk or the lowest risk that is highlighted for much of the same reasons as we discussed in the Great Lakes region in terms of what's in place in the atmosphere. But this same region does 
spare a significant risk for flash flooding in particular that may be the primary concern for y'all in these areas today. This weekend, the severe risks lower dramatically in the near term. There will be some attendant damaging wind threats that we can see already highlighted here through the southeast tomorrow, so we may see these risk areas upgraded or highlighted here with these storms that push through the northeast tomorrow as well. They're subject to change. But I'm hoping that we can exit an incredibly active and long severe weather stretch even if only for a few days. I'll continue to keep an eye on severe weather, as y'all know I do. If anything crops up quickly, I'm one live stream away right here on YouTube. If some of the heat and the last of that last round of smoke that came through in a cold front isn't enough to bother you guys up here in the northeast, I'm sure one more flooding risk is gonna do the trick. You guys have had enough rain recently, share some with the rest of us who are in a drought, and the flooding concerns are on the rise over here today, and also tomorrow, as our cold front sweeps through from west to east in the northeast states. Saturated grounds up here, combined with a waterlogged low pressure system, will likely cause another round of problems for some of the folks highlighted in this area in particular, up through Montreal and in Quebec. But uh, something else is cropping up here too, down here in the southwest. What's that? The end of July is bringing the fruit of the monsoon to y'all. Up further north from Tucson in Arizona, which has had all the fun recently with some damaging hail and windstorms there. So going into the future here, the day five outlook for Monday through Tuesday still has this pattern in place for the desert southwest. It looks like it's going to be pretty sporadic for now, but it's there. And now we wait. Thanks for watching today's video, y'all. Enjoy the storms as best you can. Remember, don't drive through flooded roads. If you can't enjoy them and you got that storm anxiety today, I appreciate you for taking the time to be weather aware via my channel as one of the many resources out there. So hopefully this update taught you some cool stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.